has the U.S. effectively given the green light to a 21st century Cold War? It's a very valid question after considering a new resolution that was overwhelmingly passed by the House with a vote of 411 to 10. House Resolution 758 is a piece of legislation with the title strongly condemning the actions of the Russian Federation under President Vladimir Putin, which has carried out a policy of aggression against neighboring countries aimed at political and economic domination. That is the title of this resolution. And it makes a number of demands, including calling on Russia to stop supporting local militias in eastern Ukraine and the cancellation of Crimea's decision to join Russia. It also says military intervention by the Russian Federation poses a threat to international peace and security, which some critics uh, have said could be used as justification to one day go to war with the country. One of those critics is former Congressman Ron Paul. Earlier I spoke with him about this resolution and I first asked him whether he was surprised that it passed with so much support. Well, no, I'm not surprised they voted for it because I understand how legislation is passed in Washington. It's not with deliberate study. This probably popped up an hour or two before. Probably nobody read it. I went through the whole thing. There are 16 pages of it. And if they read it and still voted for it, there's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with them for not reading it. But I think the uh, 10 people who voted against it obviously read it. But uh, these are generally, you know, just superficial in nature when it comes to uh, discussion. But they're very, very important. And uh, that's why I've been so upset about it, uh, because uh, the title of these things and the superficial explanation is, uh, well, we ought to uh, discuss discipline Russia because they're causing so much trouble and that seems to be the popular thing and they don't the members of Congress rarely read these and then they go along with it but they get themselves into trouble because I I remember very clearly in 1998 a short time after I just went back to Congress uh, a resolution similar to this came up dealing with Iraq and I took to the floor and took the time in opposition and said this is a horrible resolution although it's not a declaration of war it means means that we are going to precipitate one in no time and you know four years later we were at war with Iraq now this hope and pray I'm absolutely wrong on this uh, and that's why I'd like to alert as many people as possible but it's this kind of stuff that stirs up trouble and I'd rather dissipate the problems and uh, and have uh, our government uh, uh, you know tone the rhetoric down a little bit and this this was terrible this is just a very provocative resolution certainly a a lot of controversial rhetoric in this piece of legislation, excuse me. Many times we see votes take place in the House that are clearly partisan, but what was so interesting about this is, uh, you know, the partisan game was put aside and we saw Democrats and Republicans really supporting this bill. I, I mean, for those people perhaps that did read it, what do you think is behind them supporting it? Are, are lawmakers, do you think, representing what their constituents actually believe or is this about something else? Well, this sort of fits my theory that there's uh, too much bipartisanship there. The opposition really doesn't think things through. They also just had a, uh, a, a, they're getting ready to have a vote on NSA. Well, we want to rein in NSA. And uh, a House vote in the House showed that the large majority were against, uh, uh, you know, where they were for reining in the NSA. And yet, quietly, when the omnibus comes up, they just slip it out after the people express themselves. So this is the way it works. But this is bipartisanship. Uh, Republicans and Democrats have the same foreign policy. They try to make it different because they might have one a little more aggressive than the other. But when it is compared to a constitutional foreign policy of non-intervention, there's a dramatic difference. So when they talk about the new Secretary of Defense coming in, I said it doesn't really matter a whole lot. They all support intervention. And this is why Republicans and Democrats go along with it and they get their ear out there and they think, oh, this looks popular. I don't have, everybody's voting for it. It sounds good. Uh, so they don't, they don't read the 16 pages and they say, well, this isn't really a declaration of war. It might not even come up in the Senate. But you do this enough times. It's propaganda is what it is. It's part of the war propaganda machines, just like the major networks are. You know, you're not going to hear uh, criticism on Fox or MSNBC or CNN about this. Uh, they're, they're just going to ignore it. We certainly haven't seen it covered in the least, which is so interesting. 
interesting, and it was actually difficult to find any information uh, on uh, this bill getting passed, even uh, in the internet, on online media. Uh, but in a statement you released, you talk about why uh, you think about you think this is a dangerous piece of legislation, and you mentioned uh, uh, that it's a war declaration, that it talks about how Russia poses a threat to America's international peace and security. Some people will look at that and just read it as empty rhetoric, but you say it could be used as justification for war going forward. Talk about that. Well, it's, it's propaganda, and uh, people, the more people who hear that in the Congress, the more likely they'll go along with it. But if you look at what's been in the news for the last year, ever since, uh, you know, NATO and the European Union uh, committed that coup and overthrew an elected leader in Ukraine, you know, it's, it, it's been steady. So, uh, and this is just a continuation of that and another step, uh, and depends on what happens here, uh, you know, it may be that the sanctions and everything will backfire. Interestingly enough, the one part of that bill, that too, I just had to laugh at it. it, was so silly. They said one of the problems we have to rein in the Russians for is putting on sanctions that are hurt, <laughs> hurting the Ukrainians. And I thought, who's putting on sanctions on whom? You know, this is so ridiculous. But the good news, I think, is in spite of the fact we're not seeing it on the news and you had trouble finding it, there are some other people uh, speaking out. There are a couple articles today, and Salon will write about it and even we have a guy that thinks has been way out of it on foreign policy uh, Henry Kissinger actually is coming up with decent statement that said we got it wrong on this and uh, maybe he feels safer because he's not in government but he's making more sense now than he's ever made before well what's next for this resolution I mean does it need to be passed in the Senate signed into law before it can carry any weight or or, or does it just stand as it is yeah, this won't go anywhere. I mean, uh, Reed would, if, if they were serious about, you know, setting the stage and implementing some of this, and it's it's a long-term project, Reed won't bring it up in the Senate. If they did some weird reason pass it in the Senate, it wouldn't be signed the president. He would totally ignore it. So it's really a stunt, but it's a dangerous stunt because it conveys opinion. And now they can brag and say, you know, this is what we said about the Russians, and only 10 people opposed it. And there were five Democrats and five Republicans. You know, I believe in coalitions. I don't believe in this bipartisanship supporting bad stuff. But the coalitions of coming together, say, with those Democrats and Republicans, that's what we need. Those are the kind of people I worked with in Washington, like a Dennis Kucinich and I. Matter of fact, we've been talking about this these last couple days on what we can do to get more attention, uh, you know, to let the American people know what's going on and what the long-term ramifications of this would be. Uh, you know, and I, I think that, uh, you know, what I, long-term, is probably going to end all this is what ended the Soviet system. The Soviets and the Americans didn't have to fight a nuclear war. The Soviets went broke. They couldn't afford all this. And that is what will happen to America, and we'll all suffer for it. So even though people think, well, the answer to this is just threatening Russia and putting on sanctions, those sanctions uh, just may backfire on the Europeans as well as the Americans because uh, there are going to be some changes in America just as they are in Russia. Yes, we're penalizing the people of Russia, but eventually you're going to see a downturn here in our oil industry because it's affecting our economy as well. All right. Former Congressman and presidential candidate Ron Paul, thank you so much for weighing in on that.